I'm Steve for This Up With Cars, and today I'm back with my Marcos 3 liter GT. This car is drivable, but just barely. There's a problem with the alternator, which is not making it very fun to drive. It's an intermittent problem where the alternator at some points tries to charge the battery too far. It starts wanting to charge over 16 volts, which puts a real drag on the belt because the alternator is trying to draw so much power. So let's start today by getting that fixed and getting this car back on the road. It'll try charging more than 14 volts. The belt will start squealing, so I'll have to slow down or shift gears to bring my engine RPM down. But the minute it starts getting too fast again, well, now it's not gonna do it because it's an intermittent problem. It's been a couple minutes and it's, and it's doing it again now. Everything seems to be fine now. And now it's not. Although it seems to be having the problem a lot less regularly than it used to. And now it's doing again. It's trying to charge over 16 volts and really bogging down the belt drive. But if I push the clutch in, it goes away. If I downshift and can keep my RPMs low enough, it's okay. This car uses the Ford Essex 3 liter V6 and the alternator is in a very easy to access location. So let's get this one out. Unplug the wiring. Let's take this over to the bench because I will have to reclock the new alternator as well as switch over the pulley and fan. If we take a look at our two alternators, our new one and our old one, they look pretty similar. On the back, same connections. But look at this ear here. It's not right here. It is actually rotated like that. So I need to reclock the new alternator so that it matches the old one. To do that, I need to take the plastic cover off the back. And then I can take these three screws that hold the case together off, turn the front of the alternator so that it matches up with the way this one was, and then bolt it back together. Now let's take it over to the press. Now I can reclock my alternator. So I want to turn this. To be like that. To match the old one. Now I can put the bolts back in. Now let's swap over the fan and pulley to the new alternator. I'm using a 7 8 socket.
This old blade even says Lucas on it. There is a key here on the shaft. So everything has to line up with that key to go on. The little key keeps wanting to fall, so I'm going to put some grease on it to hold it in place. Put a small amount of grease in the keyway. Now that will hold the key there. Now our new alternator is clocked the same as the old one. Let's install it and see if it works. The fit and finish on these cars I would say is a little worse than TVRs and Janetta's. Here's the bracket that holds the alternator and that is not the correct spacing for this here. So there was all kinds of various spacers and things that were in there to make the alternator fit onto there. Only thing left to do is to connect the wiring. Let's start the engine and try it out. With the engine not running, we're at 12 volts. Looks like it's working. I think this has fixed my problem. Now I can get out and enjoy driving the car. There's one more thing that I want to fix real quick. This knob here is supposed to move the pedals forward and back because there is no adjustment in the seats. But as you can see, it's not attached right now. So let's go into the pedal box and figure this out. The pedal mechanism is under this cover right here. And this is what it looks like. You can see the little screw there that moves the pedals forward and back. Down there is actually the inside of the car. That's the floor. So I can't see in here anything wrong. That knob should attach to the shaft right here. And maybe the shaft is broken in half. Let's see if this will pull out. I just heard something fall off of it. It's very hard to see back in there, but that is where it connects to the shaft on the other side of that right there. Now I have the end of that knob up there. You can see what that looks like. That comes down and mates onto that. You can see it's trying to turn the screw there. Well, I've pulled the dash back so that I can look in there. This is the best view that I'm going to be able to give you inside of there. But the end of this crank, 
I pulled it out so that I could reach it with my hand, and it's plastic. So I think that the joint there is actually broken, and I'll need to order a new one in order to fix this. So this is something that I'm not going to be able to fix today. That's going to be it for today. I have another car that can go back on the street. I've actually been thinking about selling this car. So if you're interested in this car, send me a message. And whether I keep this car or sell it, there will still be more to do on it. So if you want to see videos like that, comment below and click subscribe.